let us go for a comparative study in between prims and kraskal's algorithm we shall go for the comparative study we shall do the analysis and we shall uh, we shall suggest that for what sort of graphs what kind of graphs this prims and kraskal's algorithm will be applicable we know that prims and kraskal's algorithm both will will find out the minimum spanning tree from a given graph please watch our previous videos where we have uh, we have explained this prims and kraskal's algorithms with proper examples and all so those algorithms against those algorithms will be calculating the complexities accordingly so prims and kraskal's algorithms is having a very basic difference in case of prims algorithm we require one seed value arbitrarily given user given seed value also known as the root node from there the tree will grow we know that in case of tree if we are having n number of nodes we will be having n minus 1 number of edges so the root node will be given by the user and from where the tree will grow and it will take all other remaining vertices of the graph and in this way if you stop the execution of the prims algorithm in between then you shall see that there is a single tree existing in the graph but on the other hand in case of kraskal's algorithm we we have shown you that in case of kraskal's algorithm we don't require any seed value from the user so user is not supposed to give me any seed value so we shall construct trees considering different edges having got the minimum weight and always keeping this one in mind that there should not be any circle getting formed so if you stop this kraskal's algorithm in between the execution then you can find that there are several trees have got formed that means we are getting one forest and those trees in the later half of the algorithm will get connected through edges and ultimately at the end it will give us one minimum spanning tree so these are the very uh, small philosophical and logical differences between prims and kraskal's algorithm so let let us calculate its complexities and all okay see the evolution of the execution of the kraskal's algorithm so at first we are going to discuss the kraskal's algorithm is as follows big theta of a log of a to short the edges we know that we are having n number of nodes and we are having m number of edges okay so here we are having say a number of edges here in this particular uh, note so now in this case at first we should have to short them in the ascending order so to short this a number of edges we require big theta of a log of a complexity to short the edges which is equivalent to the complexity of big theta of a log of n become because it becomes like this one why we know that the graph should have if the graph is connected graph it is having a, a single component so if it is having n number of nodes so it must be having n minus 1 number of edges now if we don't consider any kind of parallel edges or if you don't consider any kind of loops in that case the graph can have maximum n c2 number of uh, edges so that is nothing but n into n minus 1 by 2 number of edges so the minimum edge number will be n minus 1 and the maximum edge number will be n into n minus 1 whole by 2 so that has been mentioned and a will be lying in between so that is the case now to initiate n disjoint sets in the algorithm you can find that we will be forming sets containing one element from n each so in that case it will be taking b theta of n will be the complexity b theta of n will be the complexity so b theta of 2a into alpha alpha is nothing but a, a function 2a n for for all find and merge operations where alpha is a slowly growing function because slowly growing function means now now when the trees are getting formed so we are having so many edges we are getting considered and now we are having some remaining edges so the complexity of the algorithm will 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 be increasing so that's why we are taking this one and he as here we are having uh, undirected graph so this each and every edge will be considered twice from uh, starting from the two n nodes so that's why we are having 2a into alpha is a function slowly growing function which will be having 2a comma n for all the find and merge operations where alpha is the slowly growing function 
at worst big O of A for the remaining operations. So, depending upon the number of edges, the remaining operations will take big O of A. So, this is the complexity we are having in different phases of the Kraskal's algorithm. So, now in Kraskal's algorithm, the selection function chooses edges in the increasing order of length, okay, increasing order of length irrespective of irrespective of previously chosen edges and will not allow selections to form forming cycles. So, that means I told you this one earlier that if you if you just uh, block the execution of the Kraskal's algorithm in between you will be getting so many trees are there, disjoint trees are there forming a forest and at the end of the algorithm all these trees will get connected so that it will give you a single uh, minimum spanning tree forest will merge to one tree. So, we have discussed this one. Now, let me come to the Prim's algorithm. So, whatever we have discussed is related with the Kraskal's algorithm. Now, let me let me come to the Prim's algorithm. Okay. Now, in case of Prim's algorithm, I told you that it requires one seed value. In case of Prim's algorithm, we require one seed value. So, Prim's algorithm minimum spanning tree grows from an arbitrarily given seed or root node. Here main loop executes for n minus 1 number of times because we know that if there are n number of nodes, so n minus 1 number of edges are to be selected to form a tree. So, that is why the main loop will be executing for n minus 1 number of times. At each iteration it takes time big theta of n. So, the net complexity will be big theta of n square. So, n number of times the loop is executing for each and every iteration the complexity will be big theta of n. So, the net complexity of the Prim's algorithm will be big theta of n square. Prim's and Kraskal's algorithm both can use heap data structure for their implementations. Now, see questions might be coming in our mind that in which sort of graph we should apply Prim's not Kraskal's and vice versa. See whenever we are having a very dense graph, dense graph means we are having almost n into n minus 1 by 2 number of edges. So, whenever we are having a very dense graph that means the number of edges will be very near to this then in that case big theta of a log of n if you just replace by replace this a by this particular value it is coming like big theta of n square log of n. So, the complexity is going towards big theta of n square into log of n, but in the dense graph also the Prim's algorithm's complexity will be big theta of n square. So, obviously, big theta of n square into log of n is higher than the n square. So, as a result of that, our suggestion is that for the dense graph, always we should go for the Prim's algorithm because that will be incurring lesser complexity. But for the sparse graph, that means when this value of a will be very much near to this n minus 1, will be very much near to this n minus 1. In that case, in case of sparse graph, here we will be having this n minus 1 into log of n. So, the complexity expression will be n log of n. So, big theta of n log of n. So, but here the complexity will still remain with the n square. So, n log of n, big theta of n log of n is obviously is lesser than the uh, big theta of n square. So, for the sparse graph, we will be using Kraskal's algorithm rather than Prim's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. So, this is the comparit comparisons, this is the contrast, this is the respective complexity calculations of this Prim's and Kraskal's algorithm. I think you are getting this particular logic. So, please watch the videos for the Prim's and Kraskal's algorithms related videos. So, so that you can have the better understanding on this particular topic. Thanks for watching this video.